the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, everyone, as we come again to another beautiful Sunday. A lot of us are excited for the Super Bowl, but I hope you are more excited to be here than the Super Bowl. More excited to uh, be together around his table, around his table, and uh, take from him what he wants to give us. So been this year, we've been, we've been uh, talking more and more by God's grace about the theme of the, of the year, which is again, our Lord Jesus Christ as the phys physician and the church as our hospital. And we've been talking more and more about, through the Gospels of Sunday, taking a hint from that about diseases, spiritual diseases that we need to be aware of, and spiritual diseases that we need to bring up to the surface in order to be healed and ask the Lord, the great physician, for his healing. We've talked in the last couple of weeks, if you remember, about the disease of sadness and how we can counteract that with joy. We talked about last week about the disease of what, if you remember, blindness. Thank you. Somebody's listening. Spiritual blindness. Spiritual blindness. And the story of the Lord healing the born blind. Today we come to another beautiful passage and teaches us also another thing that we need to pay attention to, another disease that we need to pay attention to and bring to the surface and bring it, put it in front of the Lord in order to be, to be healed. Remember, again, unless we know that there are diseases, we're never going to be healed. Unless we recognize what is that, we're never asked to be healed. Story of today, the Lord in John 6 from 22 to 27, continuing his preaching and continues its teaching and continues his mission and moving from one place to another place and then looking around him and seeing multitude of people following him. And you think again as anybody else, as any leader, as any person, he will feel the joy and the excitement. People are following him and people are coming after him and people are seeking him. But then he turned around and told them something that is very, very unique and very convicting. It says in verse 25, John 6, 25, And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. You just don't want me. You want my gifts. You want what I'm giving you. And then he goes on at the end of the passage, if you paid attention also, do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Between people who are coming in order to receive something for him, and between people who are always, always working in order to receive the food that is perishes, the Lord is actually pointing out to thee a beautiful and a very dangerous and a very deep sickness that we are all struggling with. What is that? What do you think of that? What would that be? Materialism. Materialism because of what? Hmm? Say again. Greed, yes, because of what? Thank you, yes, because of what? What, what, are, what is the root of all those things? <coughs> Disease of self-love, loving ourselves. There is always, as we've been talking before, there's always something good and something bad. As we talked about sadness, for example, there is healthy sadness. There is healthy self-love that we need to acknowledge the God's work in us. But when we start to actually love ourselves more and more than loving God, when we start to live a life that is so much self-centered versus a, self, a life that is Christ-centered, then we start to suffer. Then we start to suffer. And that's what the Lord is saying today. You just want me because you love yourself so much. All what you want is what, is what I'm giving you. You love yourself so much to all what you work for and labor for and tail for is the food that will perish but you are not paying attention to something that's much, much important than that. And that disease becomes more and more even dangerous when we have that mindset even in our spiritual life, even our spirituality. Again, the people who were going after the Lord, you know, they were seeking Him. 
in a way, but not really. It becomes more and more dangerous when we are, when we base our spiritual relationship with the Lord based on ourselves, not based on Him. And that's why we struggle, because when we don't get what we want in our mind, then we look at Him like, you know what, you are not here, you're not fair. Why are you letting me suffer? Why are you letting me struggle? Self-love, that is a very, very destructive. Actually, the Father says that self-love is probably the root of too many other diseases. Because really, if I'm so much loving myself to the point of being selfish, the point of I'm working around everything, around myself, then will lead me to have too many other things. And as we've been talking before, talking about the root, the symptoms, and the treatment, the root of self-love is, as the Father says, is basically, instead of contemplating and thinking about God, we start to contemplate about what? About ourselves. Ourselves. Just examine ourselves from the moment we wake up in the morning till the end of the day. What goes in our mind? How many times we think about ourselves and our needs and how many times we think about Him and what He can give us? How many times we're really focused in order to receive Him, not to receive what we want? The root of that is looking so much into ourselves, contemplating about ourselves. And the more we contemplate about ourselves, the more we actually bring to the service our desires. Again, what do I need? What are my needs today? What are the things that I'm longing for? What are the things that will really make me happy today? And we keep thinking about that and that, and we're feeding more and more on our what? Desires. And because of that, we are so much indulging that self indulgement or self-love. And that's what the Lord recognized today and said, you know what, wait a minute. Because the first thing that the Lord said and the first teaching that he said as he was starting his mission is repent because the kingdom is heaven is at hand. And then the first and the only condition that he put for people to follow him is to do what? To carry the cross. Forget about yourself. Carry the cross and come and follow me. Carry the cross and come and follow me. Self-love is something that is very, very, very destructive, not only to ourselves, but to our relationship with each other, to our communities. How often you think, like, okay, you know what, if I really have a relationship with someone, what, are, what, 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 what is the root and what is the basis of that relationship? Because what I'm getting from the person or what I'm actually giving to the person. Self-love is the main problem in our houses, in our families, in our marriage. Because self-love is about myself. What, am, what is it for me that I'm getting in that relationship? And if I don't get what I want, then you know what? Goodbye. I can't take this anymore. Self-love is what is destructing our communities and our churches because we come here and each one is looking at himself as the best person. What is it that I'm getting here for myself? A disease that is really, really very dangerous. We'll talk about several things here. But before that, I want to stop at one point about the idea of self-love in my relationship with the Lord because it's very, very subtle and comes very, very, very uh, uh, covered. That, you know, so what's wrong you know, when we come and we pray and we establish a relationship with God because we want his gifts? Well, at least we're here, right? Here we are today. But as I've been saying before, like even on the way to church this morning, do we ask ourselves, why am I going to church? Is it just to get the blessing? Is it maybe because I have an interview or I have a relationship or I have an you know, exam or I have an issue or a problem? Or I'm coming for him and him only? A beautiful passage in one of the beautiful books, The Imitation of Christ. It reads like this. I'll read this and pay attention to the word. It says, Jesus has always many who love his heavenly kingdom, but few who bear his cross. He has many who desire consolation, but few who care for trial. He finds many to share his table, but few to take part in his cup. All desire to be happy with him. Few wish to suffer anything for him. Few wish to suffer anything for him. All 
want to do what? Desire to be happy with him, but few wish to suffer anything for him. Many follow him to the breaking of bread, but few to the drinking of the chalice of his passion. Many revere his miracles, few approach the shame of the cross. Many love him as long as they encounter no hardship. Many praise and bless him as long as they receive some comfort from him. But if Jesus hides himself and leaves them for a while, they fall either into complaints or into deep dejection. How, how, how true that statement is. How true that statement is. A disease that is hidden, again, we are around him, but what is the, pur the, pur the purpose and what is the reason? What is the reason? I hope and I pray that this time, we, as we are praying the liturgy and as we always say, we, we really ask the Holy Spirit to really expose this. And tell us exactly what is that we need to discover, what is the basis of that relationship with him. Many go around the table, but few are willing to drink the chalice of his passion. It's beautiful and very true and very true. Symptoms of that, the root of that, again, is our own desires, our own contemplating about ourselves. We feed, we keep feeding. All what comes into our mind is about myself, about myself, about myself. Symptoms is actually, if you look at, at the, 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 the Pauline epistle today, you see St. Paul talking to the church of, of, of Corinth, which is one of probably the main problem of, of the Corinthians was that self-love. That's why there was division. That's why there was an issue with the, with, the, with the sinner. That's why there was too many things, because they were so, so much proud of themselves. And that's why the, the St. Paul talks to them in the beginning and said, well, do not boast in anything but the, Christ, the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. From the beginning, he's telling them, this is, this is what we should be boasting in. Stop loving yourself. And that's why he talks about it today in the Pauline epistle, saying that, that you know, be careful because everything that you're doing is actually based on the, on the, on the desires that you have. That's why he talks about, you know, you have... In verse 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals. Nor, nor, and he bring a big, big list based all on what? On self-love. But be careful because that list is not a good list. Symptoms of that is indulging more and more into ourselves. Symptoms of that is division. Symptoms of that is, is seeking people's acknowledgement. Symptoms of that is self-pity. How often do we really feel so bad for ourselves, right? Self-pity, symptoms. But then comes again the beautiful Catholic epistle today in St. Peter. Talks about something that's very, very important. Second Peter chapter 3, when he Tell the people in verse 18, 2 Peter 3, 18, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grow in the grace and knowledge. Forget about yourself. Forget about yourself. Grow in the grace and knowledge. How can we seek the treatment for that disease? Few things that are very, very practical. Very practical. Number one, again, if we said that the root of this is the desires and the contemplating about ourselves, as the fathers always teaches us, as we fight the vice, also struggle and fight for the what? For the virtue, right? So if, if my desires and all what I'm thinking about is myself, let's see also how we can see his glory, see his glory. That's why in the psalm of the, of the gospel today, that's what he's talking about. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. But because we're so much looking at ourselves and so much indulged in our self-love, we miss the glory and the majesty. How often after liturgy today we see like, really, Lord, I really, I saw your glory today. We were actually, as the first people who went to, to Constantinople and brought orthodoxy to Russia says, whether we were in heaven or on earth, we don't know. Because that place was heaven. But because we're so much in our self-love, we miss the glory and the majesty that's on the altar. Start with small, they say the Father says, start with putting off small little fires. What is it? 
What, is, what are the small little things that are really so much attached to and try to put it off? Be practical. Acknowledge those things. And bring them one at a time with that. Begin with small flames and small desires. What is it that I urge for all the time? And be aware of it and bring it to his presence. Number two, take the way of moderation. The way of moderation. We're always you know, into everything, in everything, whether in food or relationships or desires or everything. We're just we're, we're fully into everything. Try to look at things from a different view and try to be walking the path of moderation. Here we are next week, you know, the last Sunday before, before Lent, right? And oh no, 55 days of Lent, how are we going to struggle, suffer with this and how are we going to survive this and all those things, right? But it's the way that the church is putting for us to actually practice not to love ourselves so much. The way of moderation. Pick small little things. Number two, walk the path of moderation. Number three is realize how much we do with our time. Because what we do with our time, we always say whatever we love, we find time for it. Right? If we love ourselves so much, we'll find all and everything to do for ourselves. For ourselves. And I'm ready to spend time and time and time for everything that makes me feeds on my desires. But when I say, guys, we have always a Bible study every week, come, nobody shows up for Bible study. When we come and say, well, why do we have to come to Sunday every Sunday? Maybe once a month is very good. One week I sleep, one week I go to God. That's fair enough. God knows that we are struggling all the week and we're struggling everything, so why not? He'll understand. A very dangerous disease. It all goes around self-love. See what we are doing with our time. Start with the small things, path of moderation, time, and number four and finally, seek the guidance of the Spirit. Seek the guidance of the Spirit to fill us, to see again as we read in the psalm today, to see the glory and the majesty, the strength and beauty in the sanctuary. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. I will never see this unless my eyes are opened by the Holy Spirit. And when I do this, I start to actually live that, love, that life that is not about myself. Take small steps. See what is it. Again, as I was reading something again, as simple as going down to the, to the coffee hour after liturgy and put some effort to talk to somebody else that you haven't talked to before. But if you notice, we all just go automatically to the people that we are comfortable with. Talk to somebody else. Don't pass by somebody without saying good morning. How are you? Take small practical little steps to build a community, a healthy community. But we, by, by nature, we're just we're attracted to the same person, the same personality, what we need, because it feeds on my self-love. Practice this today. As you go downstairs, say, okay, I'm going to find somebody that I never talked to, never said good morning, say, you know what? Good morning, how are you today? You're not going to lose anything. You're not going to lose anything. But it will be a step taking in order to forget about self-love and to live a life that is what? Christ and God love, not self-love. A disease that is very dangerous, and unless we recognize it, unless we are aware of it, we will never be healed from that. But the Lord is good, and he told his people today that, you know what? This is what you need to be careful and be aware of. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you. This is the seal, as he said, because God the Father has set his seal on him. The Lord promised to give us that everlasting food. But he just wants us to take the step and say, you know what? I pray that I am not into that disease of self-love all the time. May God give us that understanding, give us that strength to start to love him more than ourselves. When we love him more, we love each other. When we love each other, we'll be all stronger, we'll be all one community, one family that is much, much needed in a time now that the whole world is struggling and suffering with everything else.
May God give us the strength and the grace, again, as St. Peter said today, grow in the knowledge and in the grace. But to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be the glory both now and forever and to the ages of all ages. Amen. Blessed are the